Hello guys, my name is Hugo, I'm a Los Angeles based DP, welcome to my channel. Today I want to do a breakdown of uh, one of my music videos that I shot half a year ago for a rock band called Ice Nine Kills and uh, Jacoby Shedix, who is the lead singer of Papa Roach. So those are really cool guys. So the guys from I Ice Nine Kills, their thing is that they're making music videos that look like it's seen uh, from a famous horror movie. And with this music video, the movie they picked was American Psycho. So before we continue, please uh, pause this video and go uh, watch the music video. I'm leaving the link below. This way you have a better understanding of what we're gonna be talking about. So hopefully you watched it. Let's dive into it. So the whole music video was shot uh, on the soundstage and we wanted to have a very simplistic uh, approach uh, from a production design because we didn't have much time to build many sets and we still wanted to have this um, cool looking. So we decided to get the idea of uh, shooting on a black uh, background. So we basically picked a soundstage where the walls were black and uh, everything fades out into the black. And they, even when we built rooms, we didn't use the whole walls because we wanted to have a space in between them so it goes in the darkness. So it's we didn't go for a naturalistic uh, approach, we were going for maybe something like a dreamy sequence or something like can be in, in mind of someone. So I think this, this look worked pretty well. So we shot this music video on uh, Red Weapon. Uh, which was a helium sensor uh, 8k and we used under new lenses which was Optima uh, 15 to 40 and I believe we used this lens for the whole music video because it was a great range for us and it worked out pretty well because this way, because it's zoom, we didn't have to switch from one uh, lens to another. So it saved us a lot of time. And in terms of camera movement, uh, pretty much everything was shot with the use of uh, Ronin 2. Maybe with an exception of uh, a few shots that we did a handheld. But pretty much the rest of it was uh, stable on the Ronin. So these are the walls that I was talking about, you see uh, that we have these walls right here and we can actually see through them. So in terms of lighting approach, so we decided in order to be efficient we wanted to make one universal light that we could use pretty much for all setups. So we decided to build an overhead frame. So we built a 12 by 12 frame and it was rigged with the uh, four aperture novas and everything was on a skirt so it was in a soft box and we had a skirt uh, so we don't have any spill uh, on the walls because we wanted to keep everything uh, black and all this light was controlled by the sidus link which was really cool because because we needed to have a remote control we couldn't afford to have a proper setup with the dmx because it's a lot of work to handle all these cables and we, we, we quite honestly didn't have that crew and the time to do so so having the sidus link that helped us to do everything wirelessly was really great because we did a lot of dynamic light that was changing going in and out uh, changing colors and all that so besides the overhead setup in some scenes we had practicals which was uh, if it was a, a light stand or other lights it was uh, b7c aperture lights good thing about them that they uh, battery powered so we didn't want to have any cables hanging and this light uh, it was i believe three MC lights in the inside. We couldn't use anything like uh, Astera tube because um, Astera tube is overused and we didn't want to have anything in the shot that looks like Astera tubes. 
Uh, and to put inside of this light fixture we just couldn't because the Astera tube was too long. And we decided, okay, we're gonna use just MC lights and they worked pretty great. Uh, really like those MC lights, they saved uh, so many shoots because they super versatile and super cool lights. So moving on. So here is basically the setup. This is the uh, the overhead frame, the softbox, the big softbox that I was talking about. So we actually used a double diffused uh, diffusion. So we used uh, two polars because we simply didn't have a magic cloth at the time. Um, magic cloth would help us a lot, but we didn't have it, so we decided to use two uh, polys which one stop and one stop. The reason for it is because we needed to have a very soft light and we couldn't have um, multiple uh, shadows on the objects. Therefore, you have to diffuse it in a way so when you look at this, you don't see the source. When you don't see the source, then it becomes a whole big light source. And bigger it is, uh, softer it's gonna be. And uh, I think it was for the another scene. I think it's from the beginning of the scene. And uh, somewhere behind uh, the softbox, there is a light rig. I think it was uh, 600D and I was hitting the back, back. So basically I was creating this backlight to through the uh, shades to make this interesting pattern and to to show it like it's a daytime because the other scene wasn't at nighttime and we didn't use the backlight. As you can see, the production design made this doorway and this particular scene we can see in, uh, in here. So he basically he gets inside of this uh, doorway and as you can see this overhead light, it's so nice and so soft. Uh, everything, everything looking really, really soft and pleasant on their faces. Uh, very soft uh, roll off, beautiful. This light worked really, really well for us. And here, as you can see again, uh, B7C, because we didn't want to have any wires. We have this, uh, as I said earlier, we use this overhead light pretty much for all the scenes. So we're having this overhead light. Um, in some, I think this particular shot doesn't show there is like a, a light behind, but there is a light behind, I think it was pulsing so basically this light was uh, pushing a little bit of backlight so we can see all this plastic uh, backs illuminated a little bit better uh, the funny thing they all standing on apple boxes so that's how apple boxes handy we can't really see it through the plastic but it's there because uh, without apple boxes they were too low and we wanted to have her uh, looking small and have all these bodies uh, elevated, so we use those apple boxes. Okay, let's jump into this. Same thing, everywhere is big overhead softbox. This light actually was added on post-production. We didn't have any light in there, and they added, and it looks pretty realistic honestly. And then some other scenes, they actually added some other lights hanging. I think we can see it right here, yeah, you see, these lights, it's all added on post-production, we didn't have those lights. We had practical here that also was B7C and this also was a dynamic light. So basically all the lights we had was aperture light and what's cool about them, we connected them all in the one network and we could control everything just from an iPad. So basically we had an iPad and we can, could, could control all of them. We could program to do one thing and the other light to do the other thing. In this music video, as you watched it, there is a lot of dynamic light. Um, right here, I think besides uh, the overhead soft light, we also added on the side. I don't remember what exactly was it. I think it was 300D Mark II with the light dome 2 to give us a little bit of exposure here and I believe we had something on the side 
there was, a, was another light to to get a little bit of highlight in, in his eyes so we added i think some some something else i think yeah that's pretty much it on this one and this is the previsualization so what i like about working with the jensen Noyan, who was the director for this uh, that uh, we take enough time to get ready to prep so we do shot lists we do previsualization if we can uh, we talk about uh, wardrobe uh, locations uh, production design so we talk through everything as we can so we can get it ready as much as we can and what's great about this previsualization is that uh, it's pretty much a blueprint that you can share with your crew you can uh, show it to your gaffer your production designer your grip pretty much to everyone so everyone is on the same page everyone is understanding what you're going for and that actually saves you a lot of time so like for instance you have to explain to your gaffer or grip that you have to rig those lights out, out there and you have to put a diffusion there it doesn't show like a softbox but they already have the idea what the softbox going for and uh, you you show them that uh, there is another light that's striking through to have this light shadows light pattern and uh, basically you explain that the, there is going to be practical here there is going to be practical here that's how the set design is going to be there is going to be a mirror there's gonna be sofa. So they, they get exact idea what you have in your mind. So that really, really helps. Um, and I prefer to do uh, of previous as much as I can, if uh, time permits. So there was a breakdown for this music video. I hope this information was useful for you. Let me know if you like this uh, new format of uh, doing breakdowns of uh, projects that I shot, um, if you like them. I'll just do more. Um, so thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.